In this video, we take a cruise along Norway's fjords. Then Adeline gets close and personal to a waterfall. And then we explore the city of Stavanger, which is the third largest city in Norway, and check out some of the top attractions that you could do and see. So please stay tuned. So we made our way back to Stavanger, and one of the viewers uh, let us know that this tunnel is actually the deepest um, tunnel in the world, almost a thousand feet below the sea. The three and a half hour boat tour starts in the port of Stavanger, and it works its way down, and then it goes in the fjord. First stop is the Vanga Vanabong Cave, and then we see Pulpit Rock from uh, way below and look up to it. And then we go check out this uh, waterfall that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. And once we get uh, we see that, we turn around and make our way back uh, into town. Now, right off the bat um, taking this cruise the have these recordings that tell you um, points of interest and um, one of the points of interest that they mention is the Norwegian Petroleum Museum now this museum is for everybody it has exhibits and it shows the how the offshore operations have become Norwegian's most important industry and um, we've had a few people highly recommend this um, this museum so if you um, if you have one museum to see this would probably be a really good one to visit one question that's been always been asked is why are Norwegians so rich well their main industry is oil and uh, what Norway does it puts its oil revenue in a government pension fund and this is the largest wealth fund in the world um, Simply put, the government pension fund or oil fund is a great sum of pot of money that is invested over uh, all over the world with about 9,000 different companies. So um, their pension is well, um, well stocked, so to speak. Um, it's not like here in the United States where we have Social Security and uh, that's not nearly as funded as... Um, we would like that to be. This uh, boat cruise is offered all year round and uh, the weather we had that day was really good. But even when it's bad weather, they have these really big windows that you can stay inside the boat and enjoy the cruise looking outside. So you could uh, do it in the rain or in really bad weather. It doesn't really matter. You still have a good view. In a nice cruise um, it's hard to see here in this video but um, there's some salmon farms out there and uh, salmon is one of the most important exports of, of Norway and uh, people often wonder um, what makes salmon Norwegian salmon so special and those that eat uh, salmon say that Norwegian salmon uh, it tastes clean it has a sea taste to it and it's moist in texture um, and some of the biggest importers of Norwegian salmon is United States actually we get it um, here from Costco and uh, I have to say it's really good I really enjoy eating uh, Norway's uh, salmon These, these houses that you see in a distance and um, you'll I'll show a few more when we way make our way back but these are summer homes that uh, Norwegians will own and they're highly sought out and they rarely go come on the market because they're kept um, generations after generation and in the summertime Norwegians come here and spend the summer and then commute into the city to work it's um it's interesting because here in the United States um Americans don't normally take vacations really that long um maybe a week or so but um in Norway 
vacations are of, uh, of really important and they do take them. It's nearly impossible to miss this uh, impressive suspension bridge as you enter the fjord. This bridge is the only way that you can cross into the license fjord by car. It opened in 1997 and it is 639 meters long. Um, that's about 2,000 feet um, long, the span of the bridge. And it cost um, 150 million Norwegian krones, which uh, is about uh, $15 million, which is really cheap. Uh, in the United States, uh, bridges cost a lot more than that to build. Uh, just tells you that Norwegian ingenuity is very efficient also. The bridge is um, from sea level 50 meters tall or approximately 160 feet high. And the reason why they build it this way is so that um, ferries like ours can have no problems getting underneath it. And there are still a few ferries that come through here. Um, my... Uh, profession is a civil engineer and uh, even though I don't build bridges like this I'm still just amazed how beautiful um, these uh, bridges are. You sleeping on the boat tour? Um, someday I'm sleeping. Yeah? Just kidding. Someone is always trying to grab my camera, huh? Not this time, buddy. Jumping from that, see that nipple rock? Jumping from there with no parachute and landing in the water. But, but, but. This is the Vagabond Cave, and they told us that this is where they hid in the old days from the sheriff. Now, personally, I'm not really sure what significant about this cave is. That looked like a cross up there, by the way. But I don't think it was just a tree. But um, anyways, uh, it was just like a cave. But I really think what the uh, pilots were trying to do is see how close they could get to the rocks and not hit them. And then, um, and then back it out of there. So it was a little entertaining for us. Along the way, we got to see all these really cool waterfalls, and it was just uh, amazing. Um, I wish I could um, have the volume and you could hear the water, how it rushed uh, down, but it was a little windy, and you will not be able to hear it that well, but it just it was just beautiful. I really recommend this tour. So it was interesting. I thought we would see these uh, goats coming down the mountain, but they were actually waiting for us there. I knew that we were going to get fed. Some lady, I think she was an American, wanted to know if she could feed the, the goat themselves. And um, the guy turned around and said no. And um, <clears throat> she just said, well, I just thought I might ask. Uh, <laughs> I think he was a little annoyed by her. It was really cool to see how close we got to these rocks and um, I thought we would um, get to this waterfall first. Uh, you could see it in the distance, but um, I totally forgot that there was one more item, one more place that we were going to see before we'd see this uh, waterfall. Almost 2,000 feet above us. Every year, roughly 300,000 people hike to the top of Prekestul to enjoy what some travel experts have called the world's 
best viewing point. From the parking area next to Prekestul and Mountain Lodge, it takes about two hours to hike along a well-marked prepared trail to the top. There is a deep fissure between Prekestul and, and the mountain itself, but experts assure us it is completely safe. However, according to an old legend, if seven brothers marry seven sisters from the Lysifjord, the pulpit rock will collapse into the fjord, causing a terrible tidal wave. In 2017, it was way up there that Tom Cruise dangled dramatically for a scene in the film Mission Impossible 6. Do you think he hiked the whole way up himself? Perhaps Stavanger Symphony Orchestra can claim to be the world's fittest musical ensemble, having performed a concert right on the outer edge of the plateau. Just if you're wondering if anybody has a base jumped off that rock, there's been a few people, but the problem is there's not really good places to land. You don't want to land in the cold water. So once we finished seeing all those little waterfalls that were coming down the fjord, we uh, skirted around the corner and we saw this massive waterfall just gushing down. Now this uh, waterfall starts about 400 meters above ground and it uh, just dawned on me that when we were hiking up to um, Pulpit Rock, I saw this waterfall and I mentioned it and you can see it in our video, I'll put a link in the description. And that same waterfall is the one that we see down here. So it was actually quite amazing to see it. Now the captain decided to get as close as, as he could to it. And um, Adelin was already up there in the front of the boat. So as a good father, I, um, I said, hey Adelin, why don't you get a little closer? And uh, so Adelin was really excited. Yeah, what did you think of the waterfall, Adelin? good and I got it super 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 wet. Okay I'm not that bad of a parent that I would allow my daughter to just get completely soaked. She might have uh, exaggerated a little bit. Also, with my free hand, I um, had her jacket so uh, I could yank her back. Um, I was a little nervous there with all that water gushing down, but uh, we actually really enjoyed that, uh, that they got so close to the waterfall. I think that's one of the highlights. I uh, really would recommend this trip, um, this tour. I'm going to put a link to um, the boat tour in the description if you want to check it out um, another thing that's kind of cool what they do is they um, allow you to do the hike too so you do the cruise and after that they um, drop you off in this little town and they bust you up to the pulpit rock um, parking lot and then they give you about five hours to hike and um, when you're done hiking you come down they pick you up with a bus and the bus takes you back to the marina where uh, you start in the morning with the boat um, and that's actually a pretty good deal I'll, uh, I'll explain a little bit but what was nice is that the captain brought the boat way out in the middle of the fjord and you really get the sense how high pulpit rock is you could see it there in the distance and um, I was um, that was a neat experience. Like I said, I really recommend this tour. So the hike and the tour is $110 to do. And it's really a good deal, I think, because, um, for example, when you um, park there at Pulpit Rock, that's uh, $25. And if you stay in Stavanger, you have to go through that really cool tunnel that I showed you in the beginning of the video. Well, that's $15 every time you go in. 
So you're spending $75 just to um, just to travel to Pulpit Rock. Um, and this tour was $65. Uh, uh, so that's just the boat tour, I should add. Now, I didn't really film too much in the boat. I think I should have. But um, they do have a place where you could order food. And they have uh, a bakery that delivers fresh um, product for them to sell uh, every morning. So the sandwiches are fresh, they have coffee, drinks, and so forth. So you don't have to worry about going hungry or uh, not having food to eat. And also at Pulpit Rock, there's places there to eat too. So um, you don't have to worry about that. I guess that's something I worry about. I worry about food. Here are some of those houses that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. As you can see, they're really nice. I would imagine they're pretty expensive. In New Zealand, they have something like that too. They're called batches, but I don't think they're that um, nice as here. As you can see, the weather was turning there in the Fjörp, so we um, we got lucky. And uh, when we did go, the rain didn't come. But the tour like I mentioned is about three hours three and a half hours and then we headed back in into town um, we were pretty hungry by then and so we wanted to get something to eat as you can see here um, that's the marina and that's where you pick up the boat and that's where all the cruise ships come in we were off season so there weren't any cruise ships Lucky for me, right across the bakery, there was McDonald's, which is my favorite place to eat. Um, my family's vegetarian, but I'm not. So uh, every now and then I like a good burger. After we had lunch, we walked around St Stabbing Girl. And they had these really nice little streets there that um, had all these little shops. Matthew had enough adventure for that day, so he fell asleep. And going on those cobblestones, I don't know how he was able to sleep with all that uh, bouncing around, but I think he was just tired and a little jet lag too. Now there was this little cool street that I have to give credit to my wife. She filmed this portion of it. Um, the, um, the buildings, the shops are all different cool colors. And the story behind this street is that uh, hairstylist back in 2005 decided that he wanted to add more business so he painted his uh, storefront um, some really cool colors and then that kind of um, other people started wanting to do it the other shop owners and he figured that it was the city that would um, be against it but really no the city supported it uh, city hall that is but the problem they had was different shop owners wanted different colors you know one of them wanted this kind of pink the other wanted this pink so they had to kind of coordinate who would color what and um, they figured it out and this little street now was really popular I'm not gonna even try to pronounce it but uh, if you go here at Stavanger this is basically basically you do want to check out this place it's um, it's really trendy and cool to walk around the other thing that you could visit here in this uh, town, well, I should say city, but um, the population of Stavanger is only um, 200,000. But this old church uh, was built in 1866 out of red bricks. It's part of uh, Church of Norway, which I didn't know that Norway had its own religion. I guess it's kind of like the Church of England in Great Britain. This is something that uh, is new for people from America because, you know, we really try to divide church and state. Another um, cool place to visit in this area, which unfortunately we didn't have time, but um, it's this lookout tower that you see there in the distance. 
what they did was back in the 1800s, um, it was the way that they kind of kept an eye on the city to make sure that there was no fires or bad people running around. It got a little windy, so I decided to bring the drone back. And as you can see, the, there's actually buildings everywhere. And I was a little worried about bringing the drone back. Adeline had fun playing around, but I finally got it down. Once we finished strolling around the city, it was time to head out. And uh, next week's video, we check out this really cool uh, Airbnb where we stayed. So uh, please uh, stay tuned. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to our channel.